Oh look, more things you didn't know about Breath of the Wild. I don't know how we keep doing this. If you continue to follow this series though, hit that like button. It lets us know that you want us to keep making these for you. Alright, let's go. Some players may have come across this weird thing in the Hebra mountain range. Sometimes you'll just get a random Korok, literally for free. Over the years, this has happened to many players and has gone on unexplained. But player Swiffy has cracked the case a while ago. In this area, there's a Korok that requires you to push a snowball down this hill. Well, in some instances, when you're moving closer to load the snowballs in, then away from the snowballs, moving farther away causes the game engine to create less polygons in the area, and in turn, deforms the ground underneath the snowball into a downhill slope, automatically dropping the snowball down the hill right into the goal. You can see it happen from this shot here. If you ever thought it was the wind or a completely random glitch, well, here you go. Mystery solved. Another mystery players have run into is the strange skewing of NPCs, sometimes completely sideways or underground. These cases started happening in 2019, coincidentally right after the VR Labo update, the 1.6 final patch that Breath of the Wild ever saw on the Switch. The Wii U version never got this. While we still don't know what specifically in the update causes the glitch to occur, thousands of players around the world since then have been running into these tilting oddities. Did you know that any of these types of lookout towers can be cut down from below? Helps out in taking out these annoying snipers. I have to add an addendum to the last episode, where I showed Lionel and Moblin warning horns were an idea that Breath of the Wild developers scrapped and never made it into the base game. But these are only partially true. Moblin warning horns are a real thing, and they were fully modeled and ready to go. Not only that, they were fully ready and animated with Moblins on watchtowers. <laughs> While this is only viewable from mods, the horn and the animation here is made by Nintendo from Breath of the Wild's source code. We just never got to see these Moblins on watchtowers. And on top of that, we recently learned that Lionel Horns were indeed never developed for Breath of the Wild, but were finally completed and used by the new enemy in Tears of the Kingdom, called Boss Bacoblins. Do you also know exactly how warning horns work? Sometimes you'll see them use it once or twice, other times they seem to use it over and over. They do this because they're programmed to call the enemy camp's attention until most of them see you. If most of the camp still can't get a visual on you, they'll just keep blowing that horn. Even Tide Island, as most players guessed, is loosely based on the game Link's Awakening, especially with most players taking a raft over here. But the developers put a tiny detail into the weather specifically here. Most normal areas of Hyrule have a percentage chance of different dynamic weather systems, such as clear sky, cloudy, rainy, heavy rain, thunderstorms, snow, rain with clear sky, etc. But even Tide has its own special weather system. It's either always clear skies, or specifically from 5 p.m. to 9 p.m. It will always shift to a thunderstorm. Besides the gameplay implications of making it a challenge for players, this may be a reference to Link's Awakening's very first thunderstorm that washes Link ashore, Koholint Island. There's also a specific area right here in the East Akala Plains that spawns a Stalnox, and in this small circle around it, it will thunderstorm 24-7 no matter what. Getting struck by lightning will light objects around Link on fire. But did you also notice that your core temperature goes up to the max for a split second? On the same topic of electricity, any number of things can deflect Octorok shots. Hitting them, Master Sword beams, parrying, blocking, etc. But did you also know that you can deflect it with shock conduction? Did you also know that you could block a Guardian's laser with a Wind Cleaver's Air Slash? Yes! Most of the time when you're cutting grass, you'll get lizards or crickets that pop out for you to catch. But these areas of grass are categorized by region, and different regions have different drop tables for materials, such as hot-footed frogs in the Gerudo region, Hylian rice in the Faron region, Tabantha wheat in the Tabantha region, and the weirdest one, the Elden region, which in its limited patches of grass have a 10% chance to drop a piece of amber ore instead. Breath of the Wild's map is absolutely littered with hundreds of locations, most which reference out characters or places of past Zelda games. Some are easier to point out than others, so for a couple episodes, we'll start listing some references Nintendo has made. Tarm Point is a reference to the Tarm Ruins in Oracle of Seasons, where a Golden Lionel is placed as well. The Lost Woods are pretty straightforward. Mido and Saria are from the Kokiri Forest in Ocarina of Time, but the Korok references push out a little bit farther. Mikar, 
Elma and Urch are all Koroks from the Wind Waker. And to the southeast, you have locations such as the Minishi Woods and Pico Pond, both names of the Minish race, Crenel Hills, which is a reference to Mount Crenel in the Minish Cap, and Trilby Plain, which is a reference to Trilby Highlands. Funny how the wording of Mountains to Hills and Highlands to Plains is changed in reference to Link's size perspective in his Minish form. This of course makes sense because Fujibayashi planned to have a form of the Minish NPCs in the game, but from a gameplay standpoint, he was unfortunately not able to make this work. From the only screenshot Nintendo gave us, there's theories that this may be here at the Minishi Woods, with the Lost Woods fog in the background. Talking about locations through development, location names were subject to change for various reasons, and some of them had placeholder names. You can see some of these strange names of locations through the Breath of the Wild object map, with notable ones like Typhlo Ruins, previously called Darkwood, Sanadin Park Ruins, called Brave Horse Park, Laneiru Promenade, called Spider Nest Mountain, which in the Creating a Champion book is corroborated, Tanagar Canyon called Oblivion Valley, Lurlin Village called Southern Village, and Terrytown listed as Yu Mi Village. What is Yu Mi though? Well, it was found a while ago that Nintendo had a system for creating Hylians and Sheikah called Yu Mi. That seemed to be a more advanced version of the Mi Creator. While we don't exactly know what the system looks like, this supports the theory that Nintendo used this internal system to help easily create its 400 plus NPCs to dot the land of Hyrule. On the Knight's Claymore, there's Hylian text on there that's pretty hard to make out. When translated, it says, Hyrule Kingdom, Power, Wisdom, Courage. Did you know that the Master Sword's ability to power up near Guardians is not directly tied to Link? You can consider the sword, I guess, to be sort of sentient, able to detect Guardians on its own in its vicinity, on the ground, or even in enemy hands. What was your favorite thing you learned this time? Just let us know in the comments below. Of course, we'll keep going with this series until Tears of the Kingdom, where we'll continue on with the series over there. But for everything else gaming, you know where to go, right here on GameSpot. <laughs>